MIDI editing has rapidly become a critical and sometimes tedious skill for self-produced musicians of all stripes. Let's look at some strategies for speeding up our MIDI editing workflow. To use these tools, we need a MIDI region. I've got a blank template open with a single Alchemy instance loaded. So, let's record some MIDI. Excellent. Now I want to go clean up the mistakes in that performance. Most people's first impulse is to hit the P key to open the piano roll and then start dragging note position and length to taste. That technique is fine for quick edits, but for in-depth MIDI-based workflows, it's not the best way to see what you're doing, especially on smaller laptop screens. Instead, let's go to screen set 2 by hitting 2. If it's not already selected, click the MIDI region you want to edit and then go up to Window, Open Piano Roll. You can also hit Command 4. Next, go to Window, Open Step Editor. There isn't a default key command for this window, but it will save in this screen set once you open it. And finally, Window, Open Event List, or Command 7. At this point, you can close the main window to cut down on clutter, and then rearrange these three windows to taste. Now, let's optimize the view settings for these windows. In the piano roll, go to View, Hide Local Inspector. Next, hit View, Scroll in Play, or you can use Control tilde. Next, in the Step Editor, go to View, and make sure that Link is set to the Content level. Also, activate Scroll in Play in this window as well. Finally, make sure that all three windows have the Catch Playhead icon enabled. Now, when you play back your MIDI region, all three windows will stay in lockstep with each other, regardless of the zoom settings of each window. To get the full benefit of using this editing style, it's crucial that you take a few minutes to practice navigating in this view with key commands. This will speed up your workflow exponentially as you memorize the shortcuts. Each window can be in key focus, which is indicated by the window adjustment circles showing up in color. To switch between key-focused windows, use command tilde. To select notes, use the left and right arrow keys. The right arrow cycles through each note sequentially first, and then from lowest pitch to highest pitch. The left arrow does the inverse. You can also hold down each arrow to cycle quickly through the notes. In this example, notice that some of the notes on the piano roll seem to be selected out of order as I cycle through. But look at the event list, and you will see that it's because of the small timing differences in how I press down each key while recording. You can quickly zoom, both horizontally and vertically, by holding down Control and Option, and then using the arrow keys. Set the view to where you can comfortably see the parameters you are working with. Up and down controls the vertical zoom, and left and right controls horizontal. To move a note, either forward or backward in time, or up and down in pitch, hold Option while you use the corresponding arrow keys. Horizontal movements are based on Logic's current nudge value. Nudge values can either be bars, beats, divisions, or ticks. To change the nudge value, hold Control and Option and press M for bars, B for beats, D for division, and T for ticks. For music productions that align to a set tempo, tick values are rarely needed. Now, let's do some edits. In the event list, let's fix the timing of those notes at the beginning since I hit the keys slightly before the first beat. Click, hold, shift, and highlight the first three notes, and double-click in the position column, type in the number 1. Logic automatically rounds up to the bar value, so unless you need to enter a subdivision, you can just hit enter. Or Let's say you wanted to move these notes to a totally different part of the song. You can simply enter the bar and beat where you want the notes to go and hit enter. You can also adjust MIDI channel, note value, velocity, and note length with the event list. In Logic, one of the most powerful and flexible graphical MIDI editors is the Step Editor. It's divided into rows called lanes. Each lane can control any MIDI parameter that you can think of. It can even control meta events and logic environment parameters. 
You can create or delete lanes, and then you can save groups of lanes into lane sets that are recallable. On the left side of the step editor is the lane inspector. This provides control over the individual parameters of each lane. This is where you can change the subdivision of the display grid and adjust what MIDI information the lane actually displays and controls. Right now, the lanes are showing notes, which is a little bit redundant since the piano roll already shows that. So let's change it to something more useful. Under Lane Sets, select MIDI Controls. Now, you'll see many of the major editing parameters that you need when doing MIDI scoring, such as modulation, pitch bend, and aftertouch. In the top middle portion of the step editor, you'll see the primary and secondary mouse tools. To change tools, open the Tools menu and click or Command click, respectively, on the primary and secondary tools that you need. With the Pencil tool, click, hold, and drag in a particular lane. You'll see how quickly you can draw in humanized parameter changes that will add life to your MIDI performances. If you mess up, just change to the Eraser tool and start over. Let's do a quick practical example. I've set up a custom lane set on a new software instrument track with each lane labeled kick, snare, and hi-hats. It's triggering a third-party drum plugin by Native Instruments called Battery 4. I set up each lane to have a different grid value and pencil width, and now I'm going to serendipitously use the step editor to generate a musical idea. I'm not going to put a lot of thought into what comes out because I want to see what happens creatively through a happy accident. A big part of music production is getting the tools that you use to get out of the way of the creative process. When you're stuck trying to figure out how to do something on the technical side, it takes you out of the creative zone pretty quickly. So try out the event and step editors in your workflow. You'll not only speed up your editing, but give yourself some new creative avenues to explore, which may be just the thing you need to finish that next project. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments and questions below. Thanks for watching.